Both the mechanical and chemical processes of digestion begin in the mouth, where the salivary glands release enzymes that begin breaking down sugars and fats. Ingested food passes through the esophagus into the stomach, where it is subjected to strong mechanical churning and a low pH, which denatures proteins, activates pepsin, and destroys most pathogens. The stomach also serves as a buffer to control the pace of digestion. When stimulated, the pyloric sphincter briefly relaxes and a contractive wave ejects a small amount of chyme into the duodenum. It is here in the small intestine that the ingested food is fully digested and absorbed in a remarkably efficient and sophisticated process. The small intestine might be considered small in terms of its narrow 2.5 centimeter diameter, but it's the longest part of the digestive tract, ranging from about three to five meters. This length also vastly underestimates its total surface area, which is magnified across three different scales. At the largest scale, the mucosa and submucosal layers of the small intestine are folded into circular folds called plicae circularis, or valvula conventes, that help to direct the flow of chyme through the lumen. At the next scale, the epithelium stretches across villi at a density of 20 to 40 villi per square millimeter. Finally, the apical surface of each enterocyte contains over a thousand microscopic projections called microvilli that form a brush border. These adaptations increase the surface area up to 100 times. The small intestine folds neatly into the lower abdominal cavity, framed on three sides by the large intestine and held firmly in place by the mesentery. The mesentery is formed from a double layer of peritoneum that fixes the intestine to the abdominal wall and provides scaffolding for blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. The mesentery also contains adipose tissue that helps to cushion the intestines. Bounded by the pyloric sphincter at the proximal end and the ileocecal sphincter at the distal end, the small intestine consists of three regions, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Although contiguous, each region has characteristic anatomical and functional differences. The word duodenum or duodenum means 12 fingers, a reference to its short length of about 25 centimeters. But this short C-shaped stretch of the duodenum serves as the intersection point for the pancreatic biliary tree. Despite its short length, the duodenum can be subdivided into four regions, the superior part, the descending part, the horizontal part, and the ascending part, which joins the jejunum and the duodenal jejunal flexor at the ligament of trites. The common bile duct joins the pancreatic duct and enters the duodenum at the hepatopancreatic ampulla, also called the ampulla of Adder. The opening of this duct is controlled by the hepatopancreatic sphincter, also called the sphincter of Audin. Brunner's glands secrete mucus to protect the mucosal lining from the low pH from gastric acid. However, pancreatic enzymes work optimally at a neutral pH. And as acidic chyme enters the duodenum, enteroendocrine cells release secretin and CCK, both of which promote relaxation of the sphincter body. Secretin triggers the mucosa to release bicarbonate ions in the pancreatic duct cells to secrete a bicarbonate-rich fluid, which together raise the pH to between 6 and 8. CCK is released in response to fats and proteins and causes the gallbladder to release bile and the pancreas to release pancreatic enzymes. CCK also inhibits gastric acid secretion and delays gastric emptying, buying more time to digest proteins and fats. While the jejunum is the primary site of absorption, the duodenum plays a critical role in the absorption of iron. Jejunum means empty and measures up to 2.5 meters. The jejunum is highly adapted for absorption, especially carbohydrates, proteins, and folic acid. The jejunum is highly vascularized with thick, dark red walls. Finally, ilia means twisted. It is the longest part of the small intestine at up to three to four meters. The walls of the ilium are not as thick and there are fewer circular folds, but digested food often spends the longest time in this region. The ilium is important in absorbing fats, vitamin B12, and ascorbic acid. It is also the site at which bile salts are reclaimed. The mucosa and submucosa of the ilium contain gut-associated lymphoid tissue nodules called Peyer's patches to defend against pathogens as part of the mucosal immune system. The ileum joins the cecum of the ileocecal valve. The opening of this valve is tightly regulated to prevent entry of the contents of the colon back into the ileum. Pressure from peristalsis or distension of the ileum, as well as parasympathetic neural stimulation and hormones such as motilin and serotonin can induce the valve to open, while sympathetic stimulation inhibits it. Blood is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, which branches from the abdominal aorta. Jejunal and ileal arteries form an anastomosing network of arcades within the mesentery. Small arteries called vasorecta branch from the arcades and supply blood to the villi and mucosa. Venous blood drains from the small intestine to the superior mesenteric vein into the splenic vein 
and finally enters the liver through the portal vein. The small intestine also contains an extensive lymphatic network. Within the villi, lacteals contain one-way valves that open when the interstitial pressure increases, allowing fluid to enter lymphatic vessels within the mesentery. The lymphatic vessels converge on mesenteric lymph nodes within the mesentery that filter foreign particles and provide surveillance against pathogens. The vessels eventually drain into the thoracic duct and finally into the bloodstream. Innervation of the small intestine is surprisingly complex and involves both the enteric and the autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic fibers originating in thoracic and lumbar segments of the spinal cord control sphincter tone and tend to slow gastrointestinal activity and blood flow. Parasympathetic fibers from the vagus nerve in the duodenum and jejunum and pelvic splanchnic nerves in the ileum increase blood flow and promote gastrointestinal activity. Pycnoreceptors and chemoreceptors provide feedback on the mechanical and chemical state of the intestinal lumen, while motor neurons control the smooth muscle activity. Integrating all of this sensory input and overseeing coordinated patterns of muscle contractions requires complex local neural processing. The myenteric plexus, or Auerbach's plexus, is found between the longitudinal and circular muscle layers of the muscularis externa and regulates peristalsis and segmentation. Meisner's plexus is located in the submucosa and regulates blood flow, secretion, and immune activity. The histology of the small intestine follows the same pattern as the rest of the digestive tract, but contains adaptations specific to its primary role in absorption. The mucosa is characterized by finger-like projections called villi and invaginations called the crypts of Libraquine. The villi contain a lamina propria and blood vessels with a central lacteal. Stem cells within the crypts continuously replace the simple columnar epithelial cells covering the villi. The epithelium consists of enterocytes, mucus-secreting goblet cells, hormone-secreting enteroendocrine cells, and immune-related microfold cells, or M-cells. The submucosa contains blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and the Meissner's plexus. The muscularis externa contains the myenteric nerve plexus, sandwiched between an inner layer of circular smooth muscle and an outer layer of longitudinal smooth muscle. The adventitia of the duodenum and the serosa of the jejunum and ileum are composed of a simple squamous epithelium that helps to reduce friction within the abdominal cavity. The mechanisms of digestion differ for carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and nucleic acids. Digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth and esophagus. Carbohydrates important in digestion include both the simple monosaccharides and disaccharides, such as glucose and sucrose, as well as larger starches such as amylose and amylopectin. Amylose consists of a long chain of glucose molecules bound through alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. Amylopectin is more complex and contains branches bound by alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds. The salivary glands release salivary amylase, which begins to break starches into smaller polysaccharides and maltose by cleaving alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. However, the low pH of the stomach inactivates salivary amylase. When food enters the duodenum, the pancreas releases pancreatic amylase, which cleaves polysaccharides into short oligosaccharides and disaccharides, such as maltose and glucose. Enzymes located within the brush border of enterocytes contain several types of disaccharidases. Maltase hydrolyzes the glycosidic bond in maltose, forming two molecules of glucose. Sucrase breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose. Lactase breaks down lactose into glucose and galactose. Finally, debranching enzymes cleave alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds in the dextrins remaining from the breakdown of amylopectin. The sodium pump creates a standing sodium gradient that drives co-transport of glucose and galactose into enterocytes through sodium glucose co-transporter 1, or SGLT1. Fructose is imported through a different receptor, glucose transporter 5, or GLUT5. Glucose, galactose, and fructose are exported from the basolateral membrane into portal circulation through glucose transporter 2, or GLUT2. Unlike carbohydrates and fats, digestion of proteins does not begin until the stomach. Gastric chief cells secrete the zymogen pepsinogen. The release of hydrochloric acid by parietal cells lowers the pH of the stomach to between 1.5 and 3.5. This low pH helps to denature proteins and converts pepsinogen into the active protease pepsin, which cleaves polypeptides by hydrolyzing bonds adjacent to phenylalanine, leucine, or methionine. The low pH also serves as a defense against pathogens by disabling most bacteria and viruses. When the chyme enters the duodenum, chemoreceptors detect the presence of amino acids and trigger release of CCK, which induces the pancreas to release a range of peptidized zymogens. Enterokinase within the duodenal mucosa converts trypsinogen to trypsin, which specifically targets C-terminal lysine and arginine residues. 
Trypsin, in turn, activates other pancreatic exopeptidases and internal peptidases. Chymotrypsin gen is converted to chymotrypsin, which cleaves peptide bonds adjacent to the aromatic residues phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Procarboxypeptidase is converted to carboxypeptidase, which cleaves C-terminal amino acids. Pancreatic proteases alone cannot fully break down polypeptides, but enterocyte brush border enzymes continue protein digestion via aminopeptidases, which cleave N-terminal amino acids, and dipeptidases, which cleave peptide bonds between pairs of amino acids. Free amino acids are imported into enterocytes through amino acid transporters, and the remaining dipeptides and tripeptides are imported through proton-coupled peptide transporter 1, or PEPT1. Another set of transporters exports amino acids into the bloodstream through the basolateral membrane. Digestion of DNA and RNA begins in the stomach, aided by the low pH and the release of nucleases. In the duodenum, pancreatic DNases and RNases hydrolyze DNA and RNA into their constituent nucleotides. Von Ebner's glands in the tongue secrete lingual lipase, which helps to hydrolyze triglycerides into monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids by breaking ester bonds. Lingual lipase remains active even in the low pH of the stomach, where it is joined by a gastric lipase secreting by T cells. When chyme enters the duodenum, chemoreceptors detect free fatty acids and stimulate the release of CCK, which slows gastric empty wound and triggers the release of bile from the gallbladder. Bile contains phospholipids, cholesterol, bile salts, and bile pigments. Phospholipids such as lecithin are amphipathic and surround the lipid droplets, helping to disperse them into smaller droplets. Bile salts such as cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid emulsify the droplets, forming micelles that greatly increase the accessibility of pancreatic lipase and colipase, which hydrolyze triglycerides into monoglycerides, free fatty acids, and glycerol. Bile salts dissociate from the micelles in the unmixed zone along the brush border, and the hydrophobic lipids diffuse across the membrane into the enterocytes. Inside the cell, monoglycerides are reesterified into triglycerides and packaged into chylomicrons, along with phospholipids, cholesterol, and some vitamins for release into the lymphatic circulation. Like most organ systems, the gastrointestinal system is deceptively complex. The basic histological structure is retained throughout most of the digestive tract, but each distinct region is characterized by numerous adaptations in the service of a specific function. The small intestine is a remarkable structure that serves as the ultimate port of entry for ingested materials, as well as a critical defense against ingested pathogens.